Hello, I'm John Nightingale, a director at JCT and the symposium host. Now the 25th JCT Traffic Signal Symposium was an online event this year and I'm delighted to bring you a recording of one of the presentations. Now these recordings would not have been possible without the support of a select group of our event partners. So our thanks go to the Institute of Highway Engineers, ITS UK, keepadistance.co.uk, Siemens Mobility, TWM, and of course, our media partner, Highways News. Please check out their short videos, which will tell you about some of the products and services that they can provide. Now, I hope you enjoy this presentation, and we would love to see you in person for our 25th anniversary event in Nottingham Trent University in September 2021. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm here to talk about the real-time optimizer and what the latest is from the streets of London. Uh, my name is Erfan Shafi. I work at TfL. Um, and uh, speaking after me will be Felix Rudolph from Siemens uh, Mobility ITS. So the real-time optimizer, what's happening on the streets of London is strongly linked to TfL's Surface Intelligent Transport Systems Program. Uh, this is a technology-based delivery of products set to change the way we operate the streets of London. Just like across in cities elsewhere in the world, um, there is an increasing focus on sustainable modes of travel. Um, this is driven by a few things, but the notable ones being worsening air quality, and population increase, um, which is a really significant driver for us in London. So our focus through the six program is absolutely to move people, not vehicles. That's a departure from how we used to operate. We're looking to respond more quickly to incidents on the road network by taking advantage of new data and technology and also improving the way information is given out to customers moving on our network. As I said before, we're promoting the use of sustainable modes and while doing so, obtain the real-time awareness of those transport modes in terms of performance and capacity. Finally, the program will allow us to predict the potential impact of incidents on that road network, thereby reducing capacity. So the SITS program comprised of four technological deliverables. RTO, the real-time optimizer, is a traffic management system that will replace TFL's UTC legacy system. The common operational view and incident management system, apologies, it's not something that rolls off the tongue. Um, it integrates all of our traffic management tools into one system, which will decrease incident response time fueling those two engines, if you like, that I've just mentioned. We have data analytics as a project, which does what it says. It needs to, those tools that I've mentioned need data, need information, varying types. Finally is the predictive capability, which will be a system that reacts to an incident when it occurs and is able to predict the impact of that incident upon the road network and suggest and implement the most appropriate mitigation measures for that incident. The common operational view that I mentioned a moment ago um, integrates multiple disparate sources of information. And that information um, is often of Varying levels of tech at varying levels of technology. Um, the common operational view brings everything together on one screen so we get a real time picture of the road network. And that's fed, as I said, by the data and analytics piece within the program. The common op operational view will make its first deliverable by the end of September. The main part of this presentation is about RTO and the future of what's happening on London streets. So RTO replaces, as I said, our legacy UC system, which as you can see here, 
is fairly old and clunky and not very friendly to look at. We'll be introducing a new graphical user interface. Um, it will be able to integrate with future data and technology, perhaps not the flying cars that you may see on the slide, not just yet, but maybe in the future. And this system is developed in partnership between Siemens and TfL. So what is the RTO Living Laboratory? In the next few weeks, we'll deploy the first version of RTO to a small selection of traffic signals within London. The RTO in that area will replace TfL's existing system. Up to 10 sites will be running in the TfL UTC system, sorry, from the TfL UTC system into RTO. Of those 10, two sites from Scoot, which is our current optimizer, will be controlled and optimized using the fusion algorithm. These sites will be closely monitored by the project team and our operational teams and new capabilities will continuously be added to Fusion to ensure that it outperforms the legacy Scoop system. As part of this first release, access to the RTO and training will be limited to necessary staff and uh, within each operational control area, um, including staff in our 24-7 control center. Obviously, faults and alarms will continue to be sent from RTO to our asset management systems to ensure that everything is working on street as it should be. I'll now hand over to Felix, my colleague from Siemens, who can talk to you more about exactly what Fusion is and have a bit about how it works. Well, thank you, Irfan. Uh, I'll now take over. Um, before I start, my presentation, let me thank you for having us here at the JCT Symposium. I think it's a really great opportunity for us to share some news, some facts regarding the RTO project. Um, Irfan has already revealed a lot of exciting news, especially the go live date of the RTO system. Uh, but I hope I still can get some of your attention um, as I would like to give you a deeper insight into the new adaptive traffic light control system which is uh, being developed within the RTO project. And I will explain this from a Siemens mobility point of view. First of all, um, let me share that we now have agreed on a final product name uh, for the new adaptive traffic light control system. And uh, we are also proud to announce it for the first time here at the JCT Symposium. As you can tell from this slide, we named it Fusion or rather Z Traffic Fusion. And I think personally it's, it's a suitable name as it indicates some of the product characteristics. And well, if you listen carefully to the presentation, you might find out what these features and uh, the product characteristics are. All right. So endorsed by TFL, and the RTO project, we at Siemens Mobility took the opportunity to develop um, a new adaptive control platform that is at the heart of the RTO system. But I do want to emphasize that Fusion is meant to be a global applicable um, solution. So as you may know, we at Siemens, we have multiple adaptive control uh, systems out there in their world, and we also have different UTC systems across the globe. So um, we are in an excellent position to replace all those uh, legacy systems and to market Fusion as a, as a complementary platform worldwide. And besides of the global exploitation, the, the overarching goal of the system is of course to optimize the traffic flow by adapting traffic lights uh, and so we are able to reduce congestion, delays, and the number of stops. And we do this on a network level because um, Fusion is going to be a centralized system which runs in the cloud or also on pro it could also run on premise. And it, in addition to that, Fusion also offers uh, some additional valuable features and brings further benefits to the user, which I would like to share with you now. So Fusion is working alongside with apparent RTO or other UTC systems. So that means uh, we will not take over any of the traditional tasks of the UTC centers, centrals. 
it will also mainly focus on the adaptive control part. That's really important to, to understand. Um, it contains a policy driven optimization. So what do I mean with that? So the user can configure optimization criteria according to underlying transport policies. And it's also meant to be highly configurable so that the user can change the optimize, optimization criteria and uh, all the underlying constraints very easily and quickly. Um, it's also modern, so we are generating new UIs for the monitoring, for validation and configuration purposes. And yeah, this will be supported by a map-based configuration screen, as you can see here on the right-hand side, so that the user can easily click on the sensor on the map and do some uh, parameters or uh, de detector configurations. Um, yeah, the system is also easy to migrate. So if customers already have sites operating with Scoot or with, with Motion, which is the equivalent here in Germany, um, then you can import a lot of um, the configurations from the new Fusion system. And it also um, allows multi-model efficient control. So there I want to emphasize that our algorithms are modeling vehicles separately. So it's not not in, in an aggregated form anymore. So you basically can, can track every single object in the network, and this allows us to perform an optimization rather than an overruling prioritization. Um, and I will come to the details uh, later. So let's now have a look on the, on the preconditions. So as I said before, the fusion is uh, highly modular. And in these terms, uh, it can use data from conventional detectors like loops, uh, scoot loops, uh, WiMAX, radar, and so on. Uh, but it's really important to understand that the system is not reliant on those data. So the, the backend system is designed in this way that we can process richer data from additional uh, uh, data sources. So for instance, if you have um, uh, V2X technology, then we can make use uh, from, um, from floating car data, sig signal uh, request messages, SRMs, and also cooper cooperative awareness messages, the CAMs. And all these richer data can be incorporated into the, into the a network state model to obtain an even better image of the current traffic situation. And when we have this information, then the accuracy, the accuracy of the um, optimizers who will um, control the traffic lights, they will continue to improve. Um, yeah, and as I have promised or as I have said before, I will now come back to the multi-model optimization technique. So I have prepared a little animation just to demonstrate how it basically works. And I hope you will uh, understand it a little bit better um, when I show you this animation. Well, the system has those, um, those kind of a slider function, as you can see here. I hope you can see my cursor. Um, uh, these are basically or contain some levers where the user can set certain priority levels for certain modes of transport. Um, and basically, these are considering KP, KPI weights, which are um, relative to each other. So on the left-hand scenario, uh, on the left-hand side, you will find a scenario where the buses have um, the highest priority. So the lever will go up. And on the right-hand side, uh, you find a scenario where the pedestrians run on the highest uh, priority level. So um, the animation shows two identical simulations. So basically with the same objects traveling through the network at the same time. So it's basically the same demand. So when I run this simulation now, uh, then you can see the impact of the multimodal optimization criteria. Um, so uh, I want you to have a look on the left-hand side. Um, 
So the system here recognizes that some buses will approach and it will do a signal change to optimize the traffic flow for the buses. So they don't have to stop, as you can see here in the animation. And if you have a look on the right hand side, then you can see that the buses had to stop because the pedestrians had a higher priority. Um, but in, in, on the right hand side in this scenario, um, the pedestrians um, didn't have to wait so long. So basically the, the, the total uh, waiting time, the total delay of um, the pedestrians was reduced by around about 15%. So what I'm trying to say is um, traffic signals, and of course you know this, are managing conflicts. So, well, unfortunately, we cannot give um, all the objects, all the individual screen at the same time. So that's why we are managing the conflicts. Uh, and we still have the same problem basically in the, in the new uh, fusion system, but the new fusion system allows the user to adaptively um, change those optimization criteria. And this can be done very quickly. So uh, you, you, it's possible to respond immediately to incidents or other influences. And this is quite new compared to the legacy systems we have out there in the field. Um, so with the last slide, I just wanted to give you some, uh, give you a quick summary and an outlook. The system is still under control. It is being uh, jointly developed with Transport for London. Um, we already had some research support by the University of Southampton. And uh, we do a, we, we're, we're having a collaborative work amongst Siemens UK and Siemens Germany. And we also have a fantastic team consisting out of traffic engineers, software developers, and also um, artificial, artificial intelligence experts. Um, and those AI colleagues, they already have conducted several um, proof of concepts um, to, um, to develop AI features. And they have done it and conducted it in two German cities already. So they gained a lot of experience experiences uh, in, in, in regard to um, artificial intelligence and this now feeds into um, our overarching product solution which is fusion and this is this is really a good uh, good starting point um, as Irvin already said uh, we will start our first trial in a region in London so the living lab will start uh, very soon um, so please stay tuned and we will keep you updated yeah, um, yes, and also further deployments of the fusion system are already in discussion, especially for um, for some some German um, test tests here in, in Germany. And um, but nevertheless, um, more pilots are very welcome. So if you are interested, just give us a shout. Um, yeah, last but not least, uh, when I talk to to customers, and also to our salesmen, there is always the question, when can I buy it or when can I sell it? Um, and the, the questions, uh, the, the answer to this is, well, we still have to be a little bit patient. So we still have uh, some work ahead of us. Um, the product launch is officially uh, scheduled for early 2022. But nevertheless, um, I think it's now already a good time to start a discussion with you as we can exchange information, exchange the knowledge, and we can talk about uh, your needs, and we can also uh, discuss discuss how we can meet um, underlying requirements. Well, I think that's it from our side. Thank you very much for listening. So I hope we still have some time for some questions. If you cannot raise your questions today, so please don't hesitate to contact us to contact us afterwards. I would totally appreciate it to hear from you. Thank you very much.